Hello, I'm lost. It was eight years ago. I was a senior at the University of Delaware, and all I wanted to be was an entrepreneur. It's all I wanted to be. No doubt about it, stamp it, that's what I wanted to be. But the pressures of graduation meant that if I didn't commercialize an idea, if I didn't come up with that idea my senior year, I would be out in the real world looking for a job like everybody else. And it's not that there's anything wrong with looking for a job. There's not. But the idea of it for me, the idea of that was settling. It was settling. It was given up and it was settling. And the idea of that scared the crap out of me. So I tried this idea. I tried that idea. But somewhere along the way, I would hit a wall. I'd bury myself in textbooks. I'd bury myself in websites. In seclusion, by myself, trying to uncover what it is I wanted to do with my life and what my big idea was. Tough, right? Tough. And somewhere along the way, I didn't come up with that next Facebook. I didn't. I didn't come up with that next Facebook. I went out in the real world and I got a job. But I felt lost, right? I felt lost. It was like I was going down the wrong highway in the wrong direction and my GPS wasn't working. Piece of junk. And I was lost. Except this time, I didn't know where I was going or where I would find that purpose, that passion in our life's work that was so important to me. Has anybody ever felt that level of loss that I'm talking about? Has anybody felt that level of loss? Or am I just weird? <laughs> We're weird together. We're weird together. I like it. So again, in my senior year, I didn't create the next Facebook. I tried, I tried, I tried. I failed, I failed, I failed, but I tried. So I went in the real world and I settled. I settled. I was forced. I was forced into the real world. And I got a job. Now granted, granted, I will admit, humbly, it was probably one of the most glamorized, like sexiest jobs you could possibly have out of undergrad. I, Steve Berner, was an insurance salesman. <laughs> that was a damn good one. Damn good. You know, you laugh, but Warren Buffett started as an insurance salesman, and the man did pretty good for himself, right? But it didn't take me long before I started to feel that feeling of lost again. Ah, that same feeling of lost. Except this time, this time, my dream, remember my dream? I wanted to be my own boss, right? The dream felt further and further away as the years went by. I did this job for four years, right? Further and further away. So why did it feel like that? I was entrenched in a career, right? Now I had something to lose. I had something to lose. I had car payments. I had student loan payments. I had girls to impress. How do you impress a girl if you don't have a job and you're tracing some dream and you don't have any money to take her out somewhere nice? That's hard. So leaving all of that, that comfortability that we build in our lives, leaving all of that and chasing my dream felt more and more distant as time went by. Do you think that there are people in this world who experience moments by themselves like this where they're questioning what they're doing with their lives? Do you think so? Do you think that there are people in this world that were meant to be great entrepreneurs, great artists, great actors, great musicians, great plumbers, great parents, great whatever? Do you think they were meant to be these, nurtured to be these, designed to be these, but they never got it done or they never even tried? How many of them were this close? They had done a hundred steps and they had one more step to go had they only known how close they were if they would have taken the next step. Or how many of them didn't even try? How many of them got to that precipice of actually taking the risk? Taking the risk, and they looked over the edge and they said, that's risk, I'm not going there, I'm, I'm good over here. It's comfortable, right? 
So I had to ask myself, was I meant to be a great entrepreneur? Like I felt like I was supposed to be it. I intrinsically felt it. But I, at the time, I wasn't doing it. So in my quest for purpose and passion, I had to ask myself, could I find it in being an insurance salesman? Now, I always love the question, and everybody knows this question. Steve, how you doing? Nice to meet you. What do you do for a living? Right? God, I love that question, right? Ugh. But I always felt, after I got hit with this question again and again, I felt like they were asking, Steve, who are you? I felt like the work that I was doing was defining who I was, and when they answered, it felt like they were defining themselves by what they did. It got me thinking. I never thought that a job should be just a job. I mean, we spend so much time in our lives working. So why can't we be defined by our life's work? Why can't we have passion and purpose in what it is that we do? If that's what we want, why can't we all have that? Like, why? Now, I didn't hate my job. Don't get me wrong. If you're an insurance salesman, it's a good gig. It's a good gig. I can tell myself that. I didn't hate my job, right? I didn't love it, I liked it. But I avoided the question of what do you do at all costs because in my response, in my response to that question, I had no passion behind it. I would shake their hand and I would say, I'm Steve Berner and I'm an insurance salesman and I wanted to say, but um, that's not what I want to do and I feel lost. This side, lost, right? I feel lost, but I didn't. I shook their hand, I said, I'm Steve Berner, I sell ABC product for XYZ company, and that's what I'm trained to say, and I love what I do. Right? That's what I said. So it was four years into this that the greatest mentor that I've ever had, still to this day, he said, Steve, if you don't want to feel like this, if you don't want to feel lost, if you want to find a way, we want to find what that first step might be in changing who you are and what you're doing, you can't do it in seclusion like you've been doing it. You need a community to get you there. And I thought to myself, I'm like, well, so how does this work? I'm, I'm lost alone and now I'm just lost with a bunch of other people who come together and talk about it or whatnot. Is that how that works? I didn't understand it, but I took the advice because he was always right. And I went to my first networking event for entrepreneurs, right? And I walk up to the registration table, just like the one outside, and there's this whole bunch of empty name tags there, and there's a woman who's standing by the registration desk. She works there, and without even looking at me, she abruptly says, what's your name? And now I had been like wearing this feeling of loss, like I had not been embracing it, questioning like what the hell was I doing with my life? And when she asked me that question, as weird as it sounds, I'm a weird, we talked about this, I said, well, I'm lost. I'm like lost, I'm lost. And Cindy, Cindy, didn't find very uh, much humor in what I had to say. She didn't find very much sympathy in what I had to say. And in her own little cynical way, she had her big black pen out and she wrote lost. And she slapped it on my chest and she ushered me in to a room full of entrepreneurs. Thank you, cynical Cindy. <laughs> Thank you for that. But that day, that day changed my life. It changed my life because it changed my perspective something so simple that could change your perspective, right? What I realized that day is that when you're lost, people inherently want to help you. When you're vulnerable and you're exposed and you're open, not a know-it-all, right? When you're exposed and you admit what you don't know, people, human nature, they inherently want to help you find your way. I realized I wasn't alone. I started sharing my stories and my own emotions in a weird way where I used to be bottled up, it was just all flowing out in this room of full people that I had no idea who the heck they were. But I, what I realized is that I was not alone. From what I heard, their stories, real entrepreneurs, people who I wanted to be like, wannabes like me who were there trying to figure out the same thing. We all had the same emotions and same stories and what I realized is that this community, we were all here trying to do it together and that was a lesson. And what I realized is it's not that, I, what I realized in that, it's community. It's community that was going to help me get to my idea. What was that idea? You need an idea before you start a business, right? Then I realized it was a community that was going to help me launch that idea. In order to have a successful business, you have to first, what, launch it? 
uh, teach that in my class now. It has to happen before you actually start making any money. It's true, you launch it. And I knew it was the community, I knew it was the community that would help me through the many, 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 many moments of being lost along the way. And if you're not familiar with running a business, I can tell you being lost is a constant. You constantly feel like you're being lost. And I couldn't imagine battling that. I couldn't imagine fighting through that without a carefully selected community of mentors and peers and influences as I go through that journey. Now three, four years in, right? <clears throat> so I felt so strongly about community, I decided, well, shoot, I'm going to build a business around it. So I did. Today I run a business called Hatch House Ventures. Hatch House Ventures. And what we are is we are a network of startup incubators supporting young entrepreneurs, and we partner with university entrepreneurship centers to do this. We have four locations in the Philadelphia region, and we are growing. And it's our community that has served us so well and what we've surrounded ourselves with, and it continues to benefit the people who join us. It's family, it's a community with structure and accountability, and it's just cool. So, I'm gonna share with you, if you am I connecting with anyone here? Can somebody feel what it feels like to be lost? Thank you. Good, so if I'm speaking to you right now, I'm gonna give you my five steps. Assuming I can remember them all, here's five. That, ha that helped me, I did not invent these steps, they were taught to me, but I hope they work for you. The first step is the ability to accept and diagnose that you are indeed lost. <laughs> Accepting it, you are lost, because nothing started, nothing great starts unless you can admit it and identify that the feelings that you have of restlessness and dissatisfaction in your life are only a result of wanting more. It's only a result of wanting more. Wait a second, wanting more is a positive thing, but dissatisfaction and restlessness are negatives. How does something so positive breed these negative things? Wow, then your perception starts to change. Maybe being lost is a good thing. And many of us, and I'm guilty of this myself, we suppress the feeling of dreaming and wanting more as we build these pillars of comfort around ourselves as we grow up in this world and soon we have this cocoon of comfort and stability and it feels so good. You can't break loose of it. And over time, we can define that as denial because if you want more and you suppress it, isn't that denial? Step two. Step two is the ability to accept that you are lost. It's the ability to accept it and accept it as a positive thing. And not only is it positive, but it's required. Accepting that you're lost is a required step because nobody who did anything great did so without admitting first that when they first started, they had no idea what the hell they were doing. They felt lost, but what they did is they pushed past that feeling of lost by finding inspiration to uncover what the next step was, the only important step. You can climb a mountain if you only take one step at a time, right? We've all heard that before, but it's true. You only need the next step. So step three is where that inspiration comes from. Step three involves surrounding yourself with that community, that carefully selected community with structure and accountability of mentors and peers and influences who are doing what it is you want to be doing. For me, it was entrepreneurship, but for you, it can be anything. You are the sum of the books that you read and the people that you spend your time with, so choose your influences and your community carefully. Step four, wait a second, it all sounds so easy, doesn't it? Does it sound kind of, kind of easy so far? You're like, Steve, wow, all right, we can do anything, we just hang out with some cool people. Step four is where people stop. It's the defining moment in whether I will make a change and pursue a dream or I will stay somewhere and complain about how nothing's changing and nothing's going my way. Step four involves risk. Risk. Step four is risking failure. Step four is risking that you might feel lost again, that you might get stuck. Step four is taking the freaking leap. And that's where everybody gets to that precipice, that cliff, and they look over and they say, that's risk, man. I ain't going there. Because that's easy to do. If you've built these comfort blocks in your life to just 
move past that and say goodbye and get past it. It's the hardest thing in the world, but when you get out on the other side and you're doing something that has passion and purpose and you've passed that step, it is the most rewarding feeling in the entire world and you'll never look back. Last step. I remember them all. Not yet. Step five. Step five is understanding and acknowledging that you will feel lost again. It will happen again and again and again. And that's okay because since we've already learned one through four, we can acknowledge it and accept it. We understand that it is required. We understand and we are compassionate towards the emotion of feeling lost because we know it's positive. We're compassionate and understanding that we won't know the answers to every question we have in doing what it is that is purposeful in our lives. But at this point, we've surrounded ourselves with this community of resources and mentors and peers who are doing what it is that we want to do. So I'll leave you with this. When you're lost, however you define that, for me, I was doing something that I did not want to do, and I knew it when I looked in the mirror and I answered that question of what I wanted to do, and I knew it. So when that happens, seek a community, because something as simple as a community can provide you with something as simple and powerful as the next step. Thank you.